Good morning. Welcome to Greenville Community Church, where this morning we will begin week five of our 10 week series in the book of Ephesians. You know, if you've been with us over the last several weeks, you know that we've been going verse by verse through this incredible book. And God has, he has shared some incredible truths with us so far. So I don't know if you put this together, but we are now halfway through the book of Ephesians. Now, I want to, I want to make sure you understand this in case you didn't notice. Chapters one through three, which we've already looked at, were very theological in nature. You see, in these chapters, we've discovered some very deep theological issues. For example, chapter one, we learned about the spiritual blessings that we have received in the heavenly realm. Chapter two, we learned that we are saved not by our works, but by grace and through faith. In chapter two, we also learn that Jesus came to save everyone, Jew and Gentile alike, and, and he unified all people together that believe in him, and that people group is called the church. And then we learned just last week, it was an awesome week last week, we learned that God's plan, his blueprint from the beginning of time was that Jesus Christ would come to save all people and the church would function in a way so that God's wisdom in all its rich variety would be displayed to the world and to the angels. Wasn't that a cool verse last week? And then last week at the end of chapter three, Paul delivers one of the most meaningful prayers in all of scripture where he empowers the church to be the hands and the feet of Christ by walking in God's strength and in his love. See, Paul reminds the church in this prayer that the church, the body of Christ, that we can accomplish more than we can even imagine because Christ is able to work in us and through us. Okay, so you see chapters one through three, they present some amazing things about God and about us. And to be honest, there's probably times throughout chapter one and three where, where we sort of had to sit back and let the Holy Spirit really kind of help us process these incredible passages of Scripture. But now, today we get to chapter 4. And chapter 4 actually marks a pretty huge turning point for Paul in the book of Ephesians. You see, up to this point, his writing has been very deep, it's been very theological, and in some cases it's been pretty heavy. But now as we begin the second half of the book we actually see that Paul has gone from this very theological perspective to a very highly practical perspective. Last week, as we finished chapter 3, we learned that the church, the body of Christ, that's you and me and all the other believers across the world, we learned that the church has a purpose and the church has a plan. You see, God is calling us. He's calling Greenville Community Church to be difference makers in this community. He is calling us to be, to be agents of love that share the gospel with our family, our friends, our coworkers, our neighbors. And you see, we, the church, we have to come together as one unified body so that we can accomplish more than we could ever ask or imagine. So over the next five weeks, we're going to look at the second half of Ephesians. That's chapter 4, chapter 5, and chapter 6. And Paul is going to share with us practical advice, get this, that when implemented into our lives, will help us become a more vibrant and healthy church. 